Surveyors and engineers must often locate an offset curve from the center of the curve. This requirement often arises in subdivisions where the right-of-way boundaries must be located since the offset curve is often the property boundary or a boundary to the road easement. In the example that is shown, the right-of-way boundary information displayed is along a horizontal curve that is part of a highway. The parameters for these offset curves must be determined. The right-of-way width for the highway is 60 feet. The horizontal curve for the center of the highway goes from station 23 plus 00 to 33 plus 20.32. The curve has a 2 degrees 55 minute 6 seconds degree of curvature. To solve for the curve information on the right of way, it is necessary to solve the parameters for the center of the highway curve. To keep track of the information, a table is used. Along the left side of the table is a column listing the parameters to the horizontal curve. The columns of the table are labeled parameters, outside right-of-way boundary, center of the curve, and inside right-of-way boundary. The first calculation is to determine the radius for the center of the highway curve from the degree of curvature. The degree of curvature is converted to a decimal degree. Next, the decimal degree of the degree of curvature is inserted into the equation and the radius calculated. Once the radius is calculated, the degree of curvature is obliterated and the radius placed into the table. The arc length is determined by taking the difference between the PT station and the PC station. The arc length is inserted into the table. Two parameters of a horizontal curve are necessary in order to calculate all the remaining parameters. In this case, the radius and arc length are now known. Previously, an equation was given to calculate the arc length given the delta angle and radius. The equation can be manipulated so the arc length and the radius can be inserted into the equation to derive the delta angle. The answer for the delta angle is in degrees and decimal parts of a degree. The delta the angle in decimal parts of a degree is converted into degrees, minutes, and seconds. Most calculators have a function on the calculator that will do the conversion between the decimal parts of a degree and degrees, minutes, and seconds. If there is no calculator function, the task is accomplished by removing the integer value of the answer in decimal parts of a degree. The integer portion is the whole degrees. The fractional part of the answer is multiplied by 60. Once again, the integer is removed. The integer value is the whole minutes. The fractional portion remaining is multiplied by 60. The resulting answer is the number of seconds and decimal parts of a second. The answer is placed in the table. The long chord distance is found by placing the radius and delta angle and decimal parts of a degree into the equation for the long chord. The calculated long chord distance is placed in the table. The tangent distance is found by inserting the radius and delta angle and decimal parts of a degree into the equation for the tangent. The calculated tangent distance is placed in the table. Looking at the diagram, two parameters for the inside and outside of the right-of-way are needed and are shown. The delta angle used for the center of the curve is the same for the right-of-way boundaries. The value for the delta angle is placed in the two columns. Also from the diagram, the radius for the outside right-of-way boundary is found by adding one-half the right-of-way width to the radius for the center of the curve. Conversely, the inside right-of-way radius is found by subtracting one-half the right-of-way width from the radius to the center of of the road. The two parameters for the right-of-way boundaries are the radius and delta angle. The long chord distances are found by substituting the pertinent radius and delta angle in decimal parts of a degree into the equation for the long chord. The calculated long chord distances are placed in the table. The tangent distances are found by substituting the radius and delta angle in decimal parts of a degree into the equation for the tangent distance. The calculated tangent distance are placed in the table. The arc distances are found by substituting the pertinent radius and delta angle and decimal parts of a degree into the equation for the arc length. The calculated arc length distances are placed in the table, completing the table.